In this video, I will show you how to cut, glue, and assemble your value scale. You will want to make sure that the swatches you made um, by watching the last video tutorial are dry. And um, you can see that some of my swatches have a little bit of streaking and some areas are a little thicker than others. But the idea is that we made these tiles three inches by three inches, um, but we're going to be cutting them out much smaller. And that will allow us to sort of pick and choose where we will pull that value from within each of those squares. So I'm going to start by cutting up the squares and I will be labeling the back of each one, one through 20, just so that I can keep track of the order that they were so that I don't lose the order of the value. Sometimes two values are so similar to one another and it would be important to know which one was first and which one was second. You can use your scissors if you are most comfortable with that. You can also carefully use your X-Acto. Because this stage is not the um, stage where I need perfect straight lines, I'm just freehand cutting using the X-Acto. Again, cutting slow and steady and making sure that my fingers are out of the way of the blade. You can be a little bit more sort of factory-like and cut out more strips at once. And again, if you're more comfortable with the scissors, then go ahead and cut with your scissors. If you recall from the last video, the swatch on the left I painted over the top of because I thought those two were very similar in value. But you can also see that um, I streaked a little bit by kind of over brushing the gouache. But it looked like half of the tile still could be usable if I needed it. So now I have my 20 swatches and I'm going to start kind of putting these together like a puzzle. I'm looking for uniform steps between each value. So I'll start with my white and my black and kind of work my way in trying to find jumps that aren't too extreme. So you can see there I realized that that shouldn't be the third tile but the fourth tile. With your black and white, you will need seven values in between. Now I think this looks pretty good, but I might want to do a little bit of playing. I might want to reference the numbers on the back and see if I have any room for um, changing the order of tiles. If you get to a point where you think that there is too extreme of a jump between two tiles, like it's not super subtle, and you don't have a tile um, or a swatch to go in between those two, then you might want to consider painting a new one, just using another scrap of Bristol board. As you are going to repair, not repair, but repaint a tile, make sure that you are letting it dry um, before you uh, test it out and, um, and paint the tile. So I've settled on this order and I just like to keep track of everything so I don't get lost. You will now need some of your supplies for gluing. So the substrate that we're putting this on is Bristol board, 11 inches tall by two and a half inches wide. And I cut out a little window for the size that the test tiles would be. They are going to be one and a half inches wide and one inch tall. And I will line them up from the lightest value to the darkest value. For this exercise, I'm using Nori paste and a brush that is our starch-based glue. It's water-based and I really like it um, because it is repositionable, but once it bonds, it has a really nice, um, strong adhesion. So if you have not cut in a while, you should practice um, on a scrap sheet of paper, tracing your shapes and cutting your shapes until you feel like you are um, good and you have a nice steady cut. And once you get there, then you can start working with your tiles. 
don't cut the square, or I'm sorry, the rectangle out of the middle of the square if you can avoid it. If you make a funny cut or you get glue on it, you always have the rest of the tile and you could cut another swatch. So I'm over cutting across my line so that I can get my scissors in there. And you can see that I'm being very slow and deliberate with each cut that I'm making. I'm lining the blade of the scissors up with the pencil mark before I make the cut, and my cut is nice and slow and steady. This exercise is a great opportunity to practice your craftsmanship um, and to improve upon cutting, gluing, measuring, painting, all of those things. So I will continue on to the next swatch. Find a nice solid opaque area on my tile and I will carefully cut. Again, slow and steady. Now some people actually like to cut their um, test tiles a little bit larger and then trim up to the edge after they've done that. So I cut a little bit further beyond my line and now I will carefully trim that edge. It's really just personal preference. So if you want, if you prefer a ruler or a straight edge, you certainly can measure one and a half by one inch rectangles and you can cut that way. You do have to be very accurate in your measuring and your cuts though. So my preference is the Bristol board window and just make sure that that is cut nice and uniform. Okay, so now I have all nine values cut out. I'm going to grab a scrap sheet of paper and that 11 inch by two and a half inch piece of Bristol board. And I will measure um, an inch and a half width and I will leave myself a one inch border at the top and the bottom so I know where to start lining up my test tiles. I'm drawing very lightly so that I can go in and erase those lines afterwards. So again, in this demo, I am using Nori paste, which is a glue that I really love using for collage work. Again, it is repositionable, so if you don't push it down super hard, you have the ability to move your shape around without it tearing. Not a lot of glues um, have that flexibility. I'm going to take some of that glue out of the tub um, and seal it back up so I don't um, dry it out. Keep that little plastic insert and Try to keep glue away from the inner ring or the lid. When you go to apply your glue, have it on a scrap sheet of paper and hold it down really well. I like to start in the center and brush my way out off of the tile onto that scrap sheet of paper. At a certain point, you will run out of room and you will need to move your finger, so I use the back of my nail. Always brush from the shape off onto the edge of the paper. And be very careful now when you lift it up. I know that I have a little bit of glue on my fingers and so I'm being careful not to transfer that onto that little test tile. Now I can position it and if I don't press it down really hard, then I can move it um, if I realize that that tile was supposed to be at the bottom, for instance, or something. You don't need a lot of this glue and if you have too much, you'll notice your shape will just be really slippery. But if you don't get enough, then it won't stick. So again, it's just sort of practice and finding what works. 
Now, because I had glue on my fingers, I am using another scrap sheet of paper to help compress that down. And now because I've really put a lot of pressure on that first shape, it is permanently bound to the paper. I'm going to glue my next tile and I want to make sure that I'm not setting it on top of the glue from the other tile. So I've moved it down. If you want to have good craftsmanship, you kind of have to be really methodical and aware of your workspace. So my tile stuck to my finger and it jumped, but hopefully it looked like it did okay. I didn't get a lot of glue um, transfer onto that. So once I feel like that is positioned, I can again put a scrap sheet of paper on, press it down until it is held in place. On this tile here, I want to show you a little trick that you can do if you don't get glue all over your entire shape or if you forget and miss a spot. So where my finger was holding it down, I did not put any glue on that bottom little corner. And I stick the tile down, get it in position, press it down, and then let's say I was unaware that it was lifting up. So what I can do when I find that edge is take a scrap sheet of paper, that's just a little piece from the bottom of my scrap paper, and I will brush some of the glue onto the top of that and slide it underneath the corner that lifted up. Now in this process, I ended up getting some glue on my thumb and then some glue on the tile, which you can see. So I have carefully grabbed a sheet of scrap paper, push down and pull out that piece that has glue on it, and that will transfer glue underneath, and then I can compress. Now oftentimes when you get glue on something, your first reaction is to try to wipe it away, but that actually usually makes it a little bit worse. So now instead of gluing onto the back of the tiles, which are so tiny, I'm showing you that you can also put the glue onto the surface that you are gluing on. If you can't move the tile around with your fingers, you can also use the um, tip of a pencil or an eraser to kind of shift things around. You'll also notice that I'm not gluing the entire strip. I'm gluing in small sections. So don't kind of get greedy with the glue and put glue over the whole thing. You still are working in small segments. Okay, so at this point, I have assembled my value chart. I'm going to put a piece of scrap paper over it and a heavy book to weight it down. And 24 hours is usually ideal for letting your glue dry and also helping it so it doesn't curl on your paper. If you have any extra nori paste and it hasn't been out very long and it still feels sticky, you can put it back in your jar and then just clean up your brush and your lid with water. Remember, keep those extra tiles. We can use these and we'll use these for other projects and other assignments. So I've waited the proper amount of time. My tile is dry and it's flat. If you notice though that you didn't line up your edges very well, you can trim it. Don't use your thin plastic ruler if you're going to use your X-Acto knife. We now have two layers of Bristol board to cut through and they've been painted and glued so it's a lot thicker. So you'll want a um, heavier ruler to work this cut. And you can see that I'm cutting slowly with several passes and making sure that everything is free before I move the ruler. That way I can be assured that I'm going to get the same cut every time. But this 
definitely is a lot more tricky to trim just little teeny bits with an exacto knife so you could try to use your scissors or just be very careful when you are aligning your shapes finally erase any pencil marks that you have take your bristol board the back side of it and snap a photo for submission hopefully your value chart will end up looking similar to this one. Have fun and good luck.